This software demonstration will show how RTA can help prevent the underbooking and overbooking of reserves and how we can learn more about our reservoir wells through diagnostic techniques. First of all, let's look at an underbooking example. Here's a rate versus a Hume plot, and as you can see, this well looks to be in the exponential decline, and it's giving us an uh, EUR of around about 3 uh, BCF. Now, when we uh, do um, rate transient analysis, I like to do multiple methods and combine it with traditional methods. So let's first look at a, uh, a type curve. Here's a blessing game uh, uh, type curve. Here's the transient section, the upper concavity, the downward concavity boundary dominant flow. So from this we can tell we're in boundary dominant flow and from the transient area we're getting our permeating skin and as we have reached boundary dominated flow we can get our uh, total connected uh, pore volume. This is showing us that we are getting a original gas in place of about 23 BCF. The EUR of 18 million just applying a recovery factor of 80% much higher than what uh, decline is suggesting. Let's go and have a look at the flow material balance. Flow material balance points about 23.4 BCF and again nearly 19 BCF uh, EUR. Much higher than the uh, um, rate uh, versus uh, QM analysis. So what is happening here? Well we should have done some diagnostics to start with. Decline analysis works on the principle that constant operating conditions and constant bottom hole pressures. In this example, this well was downstream for other gas wells, and all the uh, flow through the, the uh, gathering system was increasing the back pressure of pressure on this well, which then increased the bottom hole pressure, and backing off and reducing its rate, which decline analysis couldn't see. However, this change of back pressure was easy caught here in rate transit analysis. So we can take this data, put it into a model, history match our, uh, our data with our parameters from our type curves, and carry out some forecasting. Now I've played a what-if scenario here, I've dropped the pressure down to 500 psi, as if we say put some compression as well, see how the forecast would change. Now let's compare it with that original forecast bring on this forecast here and as you can see now this well has huge potential compared to what it was before so by doing some RTA we avoid the uh, underbooking reserves and discover that this well has a lot more potential. Let's look at an example that's the other way around. This would be a, a, a typical case where we haven't got too much data as you can see here, it's a straight line on rate versus cumulus to kind of exponential decline. We don't have too many other options on how to forecast this. And we're producing about EUR of around about uh, 8 BCF. Let's look at the flow material balance and the type curve. Again, type curve, you can see we're well into boundary dominant flow, and this is only giving us original gas, gas in place of 6 BCF, lower than the actual EUR than decline has predicted. And we like to use multiple methods in rate transit analysis. And here, flow material balance points to the same answer. So from this, we can easily see that the uh, decline analysis has completely over-predicted the reserves. And this is because, again, operating conditions are not being kept constant, but decline uh, rate transit analysis takes this into account. Now, Let's look at some um, diagnostics. Let's first look at the transient diagnostics. As we saw in our first example, when we're in boundary dominated flow, our data will be on the downward concavity. And when we're in transient flow, on a, well, in transient radial flow, we're in the upward concavity with varying degrees of concavity 
based on uh, the damage of the well. When we're very flat, we're damaged. When we're higher, we're stimulated. So from this, we can easily tell we've gone through a transient and now into boundary domain flow. We're in volumetric depletion. A transient well, like so, I'll just remove uh, my additional matches here. We're just about to move into boundary domain flow. At this point in time, we're still in transient. We haven't quite moved into boundary dominated flow because we're still in this upper concavity area. So at this point, we do not quite know how big our reservoir is going to be. At this point, we only have a minimum. So we can play some what-if scenarios and start modeling based on larger areas. But at least we now have a minimum contacted area. Now let's look at some material bands diagnostics. This is a very common case, and this is interference. When you're in boundary dominated flow and tank line depletion, all the data should be lining up on this slope. When it falls below like this, we have interference. So this well was draining the whole pool, but now another well has come online and started taking its production course and has to drop off like this. And this is also shown in the flow material balance, like so, where the data drops off. So what can we do about this? Blassingham came up with a method basically accounting for the total human gas of the system. So we can do that by grouping wells together. If we just thought just the first two wells were in the system, would this work? See, probably not all the total cum gas has been accounted for, so we're not back onto the uh, volumetric line. Let's try one and three. Yeah, I'm just creating custom grades quickly for my hierarchy viewer. Getting pretty close here. So what we can do is we can do a group, we can do a, a type curve analysis of all three, which account for the total cum gas in the system. And now it brings it back in line with the volumetric line here. And now have a good estimate for the total original gas in place uh, for the pool here. Now let's look at what happens the other way with the material balance diagnostic when the data goes above the line. So we call pressure support. And it looks like something like this. We start off on the volumetric line, we start moving out as we get an influx of energy. As I said before, we uh, cannot tell what this is, but it allows us to ask the right questions to find out is if it's a composite system, water drive, uh, multi layer solution gas. In this case, it is a, a water drive. We just have some water drive type curves which help give us estimates of things like the mobility for the uh, strength of the aquifer. We can apply a pseudostasate water drive to bring us back into volumetric depletion. And we have some uh, models to help us get our parameters, such as permeable skin, and also the strength and size of our aquifer here. Now let's, uh, let's look the productivity example, liquid loading. Now start off with liquid loading, we can easily do us through harmony without type curves. We can get an idea of if we're going to be loading. We can easily create type curves and uh, create um, templates and diagnostics. I'm going to select my liquid loading template, show my gas rate, calculate sound phase pressure, Turn a critical rate and a common critical rate. As you can see here, we're above the critical rates, and suddenly we start dropping below. There's probably a good indication we're loading. Also, the fact that we've got this sawtooth pattern in the data is very key that we're probably liquid loading here. We're getting unstable flowing conditions. The effect of this unstable flowing condition on type curve 
produces this effect. It produces this apparent unit slope, quite similar to interference. And this leaves a problem, if you're not aware of this, of where to place it on your type curve. If we place it down here, our interpretation would be incorrect and we, we underbooking reserves. What we need to do is remove the artifact of this well in this slugging behavior because it's not a true reservoir signal. So what we can do is we can apply some filtering. What we need to do is better select a true reservoir signal that flows through here and remove the artifact of this unstable flow because it's not a reservoir signal. So let's go apply some filters. Now I'm going to pick the points of here which are more representing the actual true reservoir signal. I'm going to apply this to a type curve. And now we can match the data and probably have a much better estimate of what the eventual original uh, uh, gas in place is. The final uh, diagnostic I would like to go through is out of a bad data diagnostic. Now, this is what the uh, data on a type curve uh, should look like. Now, there's uh, two bad data cases. One, when you have the delta P is too high, when the tubing size is too large, initial pressure is too high, or when the well walk correlations underestimate pressure loss. Or in another case, when delta P is too low, when the tubing size is too small, initial pressure is uh, too low, the well walk correlations overestimate pressure loss. So let's look at how delta P affects this. So I'm going to make it first delta uh, PI too high. So I go to my editors and change my value of PI. It's close to 1200. Let's go back to the type curve. And as you can see, it has this effect. This is going to cause problems in how you going to match and your, your interpretation is going to be incorrect. But it's important when you start seeing features like this to start questioning your data, where am I going wrong? And also shows the importance of getting very uh, accurate PEI measurements from your uh, well test interpretation. Let's see what happens when we go the other way around and we have delta P too low by reducing PI. And it produces this kind of effect with a very steep incline. Now this is not going to fit on any type curve. It's giving us a clear indication that something is wrong with our data. This now concludes our presentation on RTA Diagnostics.